Time Spinner completely passed me by when it was first revealed. The first I heard of the game was in early September when the publisher, Chucklefish Games, announced the release date. From that first trailer I was so impressed with the graphics and music. But now, having played and finished the game, this has become one of my favourite games of the year. In Time Spinner you control Lunais. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. A timekeeper who travels through time to get revenge for the murder of her mother. The story was decent and new characters are introduced during the game, with side quests that encourage exploration and for you to learn more about the world and history. There are a lot of collectible letters and memories to read to gain a better understanding of the characters and motivations. I've never been a fan of reading extra material like this in a video game, but I didn't feel I was missing out much by skipping over them. There are multiple endings in the game and the true ending with the true antagonist definitely added to the story and made the game better. I liked the protagonist character, but I didn't think her friends brought much to the game, other than giving me side quests to complete or items to buy. I would have liked to have spent more time with the villains though. I'll talk to it more later, but the game isn't that long. Getting the first ending took me just over 6 hours, and there were some really interesting villains that I would have loved to have seen more of, but most die very quickly. Iconoclast is another metroidvania that came out this year, and it did a much better job of making the villains feel real and giving you reason to hate or feel sorry for them. In Time Spinner, you meet a cool villain, have a dialogue scene with them, just before you kill them off. Time Spinner is a metroidvania, and it really reminds me of Castlevania Symphony of the Night in terms of gameplay. You've got platforming, a variety of abilities to help you explore the map, and you've even got the Symphony of the Night backslide. You attack using orbs. You hold two orbs at any time, and there's a lot of variety in terms of how they attack. You can use orbs that have a variety of elemental attacks, you can use orbs that generate axes or shoot bullets, or just shoot forward to attack. My favourite though was the plasma orb, that shoots out electricity at the enemies. You can hold two different orbs if you prefer, so you can use a fire orb for example and a plasma orb, if you want to get a couple of powers that attack in different ways. The game takes place over two timelines set in the present and a thousand years in the past, and you navigate the same map in those two timelines. I really liked how making a change to an area a thousand years in the past affects the present, like burning some vines in the past removes them from the future, allowing you to access new areas. The map isn't huge, and as you acquire new abilities, you can make your travel through it really easy and fast, but there are a lot of secret rooms to find. Getting the 100% exploration trophy took a lot of backtracking, but that is optional, and I didn't mind because I found the game so much fun. Movement and jumping felt great, and when you get the dash ability and double jump, I was speeding through the map while exploring. I mentioned that it took me a bit over 6 hours to finish the game once. This isn't that long, but getting the true ending and mopping up trophies does add a lot more time. By the time I got the true ending, my clock was around 8 hours. I found I enjoyed the game so much that I wanted to keep playing and find the true ending and 100% the map. It doesn't overstay its welcome and instead leaves you wanting to play more. I played on normal and one issue with that is the game is a bit too easy. For the majority of bosses I was able to beat them on my first go. I am planning to continue playing on the hardest difficulty and see how it is, but I would have preferred normal mode to be harder. For one boss, by the time you reached him in the game, I was so leveled up that I just stood there trading blows, and barely had to move and still won. One thing I need to address is the performance issues. Other reviews have talked about the Vita version being broken, and this is not true. Early on in the game there are performance issues where the screen stutters. They can be quite bad for the first 30 minutes, but they pretty much disappear later on. I barely had any screen stutters after that first 30 minutes, so stick with it and don't be put off by the performance issues. The graphics and music were amazing. If you've watched my previous videos then you'll know that I love pixel graphics, and the details and style in Time Spinner was just amazing. I want to buy the soundtrack for the game. There are three tracks in particular that I just loved and want them on my phone. I can't help but compare Time Spinner to another recent Vita Metroidvania, Chasm. I thought Chasm was pretty good, but it didn't blow me away. I enjoyed Time Spinner far more than Chasm. The gameplay was smooth, I liked the story and loved the graphics and soundtrack. Aside from it being too easy, there was nothing I'd change about the game. I hope it does get a patch for the performance issues, because it's such a pity to have a game as good as this that will suffer from negative comments because of the screen stuttering. But don't let it put you off from playing. It's a great game and definitely worth your time. So guys, are you planning to pick up Time Spinner? And if you played it already, what did you think? Leave a comment below and as always, thanks for watching. I've got a website now guys. So if you're interested in buying my book, The PlayStation Vita Year One, head to the website with the link in the description. The book covers the launch and first year of the Vita on the market, as well as interviews with developers, and a look back at some of the big games that launched in 2012. Thanks for checking it out!